powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. Janelle is off this evening. For the first time this season, a Montana child has died as a result of the flu. And not only is this the first child-related flu death anywhere in the state, it's also the first flu death reported in Yellowstone County this year. We'll get to that story in a moment, but first, breaking news to tell you about tonight. He kidnapped and killed a Sydney school teacher in 2012. Now Michael Spell is accused of trying to kill a fellow inmate at the Montana State Prison. Spell is serving a 100-year prison sentence for the murder of Sydney teacher Sherry Arnold, who was kidnapped during a morning jog. This new offense stems from a brutal assault at the state prison at Deer Lodge nearly two years ago in April of 2016. Court documents that were filed just last week in Powell County allege that Spell gave a lock to inmate Thomas Lanham to assist in killing inmate James Marshall. Spell allegedly held Marshall while Lanham beat him with the lock until they believed the victim was dead. If you recall, Spell had claimed he was mentally disabled and did not know his actions were wrong when he killed Arnold back in 2012. Lanham is serving time for rape and burglary out of Flathead County. Back to the flu death here in Yellowstone County, a pediatric flu death. The victim, 10-year-old Chloe Lye. Chloe was a fourth grade student at St. Fan uh, St. Francis Catholic School here in Billings. Officials there at the school tell us that Chloe started to have symptoms on Sunday and as they grew worse, her parents then rushed her to the hospital. She passed away Tuesday afternoon. Q2 Samantha Harrelson spoke with the principal at St. Francis this afternoon and is here tonight with us with more on the story. Sammy, very tough situation. How are they doing at St. Francis? Well, Jay, Principal Deb Hayes says it's been a difficult day for everyone there at the school. They made the decision to inform all students last night of Chloe's death before they went home. Both a crisis team from the Billings Public Schools and priests were on hand at St. Francis today to help both the struggling students and staff. In a community like this, we all gather together and we've had an outpouring of people from the Billings community and our Catholic families saying, you know, asking what they can do to help us out. And um, we want to reassure them that we're taking all the measures we can to make sure that everybody's going to be safe. Hayes told me today Chloe was spunky and friendly, but most of all, she was kind. In speaking with her parents today, Hayes says their main concern was how her friends and classmates were doing and making sure no other family has to go through something like this. Jay. All right. Thank you, Sammy. Chloe's death is the first death here in Yellowstone County this flu season. So far this season, 32 people have died in Montana of influenza. 27 of those deaths occurred in adults older than 65. Four of the deaths involved people younger than 65. To date, the state of Montana has reported 6,500 flu cases, 649 here in Yellowstone County. On a national scale, there have been at least 97 pediatric flu deaths this season. Riverstone Health recommends that it's not too late to get a flu shot. Some people that have been immunized have gotten influenza, but what happens is a lot of times they'll have a much less severe case. It's often confused with gastrointestinal illness, which it is not. Influenza is a respiratory, upper respiratory illness. You get headache, body aches, fever, having the whole body just hurting. And Kim Bailey also recommends covering coughs, staying home if sick, and washing hands frequently. In Carbon County District Court today, prosecutors said a Red Lodge man who's accused of murder committed a cold-blooded execution. Q2's Asia Gore was in the courtroom in Red Lodge today as Thomas Schifferns entered his plea. Asia? Well, Jay, prosecutors say they expect to file more charges in this case and indicated the murder was a conspiracy to steal the victim's money. Now, Thomas Schifferns pleaded not guilty to the murder of James McGregor, who was homeless and disabled. The victim was shot in the head and his body left in a ditch off Highway 212 last week. McGregor was homeless and living with Schifferns up until his death. Despite his living situation, prosecutors say McGregor did have large amounts of cash that he kept in a safe. According to court documents, the money in the safe went missing at the same time McGregor disappeared. A friend of Schifferns told officers he admitted he shot and killed a man as the victim begged for his life. Today, prosecutors asked the judge to prohibit Schifferns from speaking with his wife, noting others are being investigated for potential involvement in this crime. This memorial was set up for McGregor blocks away from Schifferns' home. 
People are still mourning his death. Schifrin's is being held on a $1 million bond. Jay? All right. Thank you very much, Asia. The former Carbon County Commissioner, who's accused of unlawfully using county equipment for himself, today was ordered to pay a fine. Doug Tucker was the presiding officer of the commission when he took $9,000 worth of county-owned equipment for his own personal use. Initially, Tucker was charged with felony theft, but pleaded guilty today to a misdemeanor of official misconduct. As part of his sentence, Tucker is prohibited from running for public office in the future. The judge told Tucker he abused the public's trust by taking the attachments for a bobcat and then loaning them to friends. However, prosecutors noted that Tucker ultimately returned the equipment in better condition than he took it. The new documentary, Dark Money, by Montana filmmaker Kimberly Reed, has made a big splash at film festivals this year. That film chronicles how Montana regulators and others have worked to disclose who is spending so-called dark money in politics. But as MTN's Mike Dennison reports tonight, two major cases involving Montana's campaign finance laws are still in the courts. The film Dark Money looks at a series of successful complaints brought against Republican candidates who ran for office in Montana in 2010 and 2012. The candidates were accused of accepting illegal campaign contributions from secretive groups that didn't report their donors or spending. State campaign regulators, however, are still pursuing a related case, a separate complaint against the actual groups. We're not just holding the candidates responsible for what happened in 2010 and 2012, but we're also holding the corporations and the political committees responsible as well. The case is before state district court in Helena, but is not yet scheduled for trial. The groups say the regulations are an unconstitutional restriction on free speech and should be struck down. Meanwhile, another lawsuit is before the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court, seeking to invalidate some of the same Montana laws, which are meant to disclose so-called dark money in campaigns. Montana won the first round of this lawsuit in federal court. James Bopp, an Indiana lawyer and prominent critic of campaign finance regulations, told MTN News that Montana's vague and overly broad laws allow enforcers to target their political enemies and suppress political speech they don't like. He's the lead counsel on the suit in federal court and says he intends to take it to the U.S. Supreme Court if necessary. A Helena lawyer working on the state court cases insists Montana disclosure laws are not being used as political tools. Most of these cases stemmed from, if I understand it, Republicans against Republicans. So it's not a witch hunt. I would feel the same way if this were against a Democrat, if they'd taken money or coordinated with a PAC that's a more liberal PAC, I feel the same way. State regulators also say no one's speech is being suppressed, including corporations. We'll let corporations speak as long as they report and disclose everything that they're spending on to influence your, your vote. That's the stated intent of Montana's disclosure laws, but it's still up to the courts to decide whether that goal complies with the Constitution. Mike Dennison, MTN News, Helena. All right, thank you very much, Mike. The film Dark Money, by the way, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival last month. It had its Montana premiere in Missoula on February 16th. A teaching method that reignites a teacher's passion for teaching and gets students excited about learning is popping up now in schools across the country. This outside-the-box approach is also making its way to schools here in Billings. Q2's Victoria Hill is on special assignment tonight to bring us a closer look. This is a typical Wednesday morning at Washington Elementary School. These house meetings, as they're called, have become a weekly tradition. They're just one part of the Ron Clark Academy method. Kids are engaged in our house meetings. They have pride in their houses. They love being here. The house meetings bring together students from different grade levels, and together they learn valuable lessons. Don't blame your, your, your own team, team for the loss. Yeah. Based on a private academy in Atlanta, Georgia, the school is built on pillars of culture, rigor, and student engagement. It gives students a sense of belonging, builds self-esteem, gets them up and moving, all while learning. We want kids to be like, yeah, I get to go to school. This is so awesome. We love going there. Beartooth Principal Travis Niemeyer first introduced the Ron Clark Academy to the district three years ago when he was principal at Newman Elementary School. Teachers started coming and going, this is amazing. Like the kids are loving this. It's like, that's, that's it. That's what we want. <laughs> 
Since then, the Academy's model has popped up in seven schools across Billings School District 2. Each of those schools has a goal of sending every teacher to Atlanta to become Ron Clark certified. While they won't be able to duplicate every single aspect of the Academy, teachers bring back bits and pieces they want to implement and give it their own flair. It can be done with the right teaching methods, with the right you know, environment and, and setting everything up that any school across the country can do something like this. For Washington Principal Dee Dee Larson, she introduced the Academy to her staff in hopes of seeing better math achievement scores and attendance. We can't keep doing what we're doing the same way and expect different results. So it's time. Now is the time. It was a leap worth taking. There has been such a change in our school. You know, I've, this is my third year and not that it was bad by any means, but you can just totally feel a, a mentality shift and the vibes are so different. They love being at school on time. I've had parents tell me like, my kids get mad at me if we're running late in the morning. They want to be at school. We've seen our attendance and our house meetings almost double from the first of the year, so it's pretty exciting. Community sponsors are also seeing a big difference. Seeing the kids step up into leadership roles and answering questions and having all these great answers to what values are and what values they want here in their school has just been amazing. Amazing seems to be the word that everyone uses to describe this outside the box teaching method. In return, students are making a bigger investment in their education, all while learning life and social skills they can take with them wherever they go. We've had some growing pains. We've had staff at different places along this journey. We've made some mistakes, but we're learning, and I just love what we're seeing right now. Victoria Hill, MTN News, Billings. All right, thank you, Victoria. Parents, by the way, if the Ron Clark method has not made its way to your child's school, well, you're encouraged to talk to the principal and the PTA to discuss the possibilities. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, an MTN exclusive. Montana Governor Steve Bullock joins us to discuss his thoughts on the nationwide student protest that's planned next month. Also later in sports, Scott takes us up to the hill. That's right, for a little local slope style skiing. He'll tell, it, tell us what it's all about coming up. And coming up in weather, we had plenty of sunny skies today, but wait till you see what's happening out in the west. That's another big snowstorm. It's coming our way. We'll tell you what it means for us in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.